Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, what makes an axe good? That, that is a million dollar question. Is it a pseudo German looking OD green painted cast head with a sleek black polymer handle and an orange grip? to give it the modern industrial feel to tickle your hipster fancy? Or is it a traditional wood and steel piece of craftsmanship that holds an edge, does the job, and looks similar to a classic muscle car doing it? Where this looks more like a Ferrari or a BMW of the modern area. Now, don't get me wrong. For an off-the-shelf axe, this thing is actually quite good. For forestry work, it is, as I've previously stated, mediocre at best, but it will do the job. And for the weekend warrior types that go out camping with their kids and their wives in their in their uh, thirty thousand dollar camper trailer, this will work great. If you're going to spend money on a camper and four-wheelers and stuff, probably the last thing you're thinking about is going out and spending a copious amounts of cash on a hand-built axe. If you are going out cutting firewood, doing forestry work, road clearing, property maintenance, etc., like myself, a quality, hard-working tool, a tool that works harder than you, has its value. I'm going to leave it at that. Moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, I have numerous other axes that I could bring here and we could talk about. And I only brought the Fiskers to illustrate the comparison. This is a very good example of an off-the-shelf, inexpensive, modern rendition of a very traditional tool. The axe. The small axe, you know, boy's axe, forestry axe, survivalist axe camping axe. They're all about the same size. There's different variants. Different companies make different things. But all those terms pretty much cover these axes here. This is the only axe that I have that everyone knows about, a lot of people own, and a lot of people love. So I'm using this as sort of a comparison because you, you know, a lot of folks that maybe aren't country folks or, or woodsmen will have only been exposed to things like this axe. When Elijah told me he was going to build some axes, I was ecstatic. I was very excited. And I, and I didn't tell him that, but I, I, I was very, very excited about getting some axes built by him. I know he does really good work. I have a couple of things that he's built me in the past or, or built and then gifted to me as well. And uh, just so you guys know, these were sent to me free of charge, full disclosure there. But I think my brother knows me well enough to know that I am not going to be nice and say things that aren't true about his products. I'm going to be brutal and I'm going to be honest about it. Just a little disclaimer there. But I was very excited. And when I got these, I was immediately drawn to the traditional curved handle. I, I love the feel of it. it. It grips well in the hand. The, the flare at the end of the handle is perfect. The diameter... <laughs> I'm just getting excited. The diameter of the handle or the uh, the width and the depth of the handle is perfect. I mean, just beautiful, beautiful work, right? Well, I got all excited and then I set them down and a few days passed and I've actually had to take some time to use these a little bit and think on them before making some more videos on them. And there's something missing. So I asked myself, what is missing? And I could not put my finger on it. And after a few days of playing with them, I talked to Elijah on the phone and we got to talking and I was able to articulate some of the things about these axes that I don't personally like. That does not take away from the functionality or the serviceability of the axe, either of them. It is merely a preference thing. I'm going to run through those right now. I would like to see a deeper cheek, you know, 
probably about right there. And I would like to see a little bit longer, larger beard, a more of a um, more of an angle down to about here, and perhaps a slightly longer pole. All this will create a little bit heavier head, which these heads are just shy of two pounds. I think that's a little light, a little on the light side. And uh, I would like to see the handle approximately two to three inches longer. Just a little bit more reach. You know, given my height and, and my body style or my body shape, for me personally, this handle is a little bit short for forestry work. It just is. It's kind of uncomfortable to run. If this were to be only a camping or backpacking axe, survival type axe, this is the perfect axe right here. But for forestry work, it's lacking a couple things. That would be head weight, beard, cheeks, a little bit bigger pole, and like I say, two to three inches longer on the handle. Now, they run beautifully the way they are. Obviously, this will take some time to get used to. This will take some time to get used to. Every axe kind of almost has a personality. If you look down them, I don't know if you can see in the camera, the way the head is aligned to the handle, a lot of cheaper axes, the head is slightly canted or the handle is warped so that when you hold it out like this, you should be able to take your index finger and run it alongside the axe and you should be able to point with your arm and the axe head falls pretty much naturally where your arm wants to go, right? These do that. A lot of cheaper axes, even hand-built axes, that are costing upwards of $130, $140, some of them that I've seen, don't do that. The handles are made out of cheap wood. They warp either in shipping or in storage while they're waiting to be bought. So you go here and you grab it, and the head's going off one direction or another. So very good woodwork as well. Linseed oil used here, very good. Something else to note about these axes is they hold an edge really well. I was shaving steak for lunch. I had steak the other day at work, and I was shaving chunks of steak off with ease in front of my coworkers, and they were ooing and eyeing about it. Um, a couple of them were trying to hide their fascination, but they were impressed. Freakishly sharp. That's after use, folks. That is after some chopping and some cutting and some, some limbing work. I was able to use this ax right here to shave chunks of my steak off. That's pretty impressive. So we know it holds an edge, but we know it's not incredibly brittle because we haven't chipped it, we haven't broke it. I'll be honest with you, I've missed my mark a couple times and I've hit the dirt and it has not doled it up at all. Granted, I haven't done it a lot, but enough to make a difference in a cheaper ax like this. When you get these axes, you get a little, a little snap type scabbard and the leather work is quite good. Everything about these is quite good. I truly think that these axes are quite good the way they are. But what I would like to do in the following series, this is more of an introductory type thing, is just put them to work and talk a lot less about them. I want to get all my thoughts about these out. And uh, I think I've done that. And I think... Moving forward in this series, we will pretty much just use the axes and keep the words to a minimum. This is a little song I wrote for my daughter about living on the mountain. Where she lived on the mountain, ten or so chickens and a little Giddy, bitty, little tiny dirty feet Where she lived on the mountain with her mom and her dad And her little, giddy, bitty, tiny little dirty feet Yeah, she, she didn't know the difference Oh, she, yeah, she didn't know the difference.